finally, it seems, finally, at least one government is getting the message on water and trying to make things happen. The New South Wales government that earlier this week committed to the new Dungowan Dam near Tamworth and a bigger Wyangala Dam near Cowra has now fast-tracked other water-related projects to save towns that would otherwise have run out of water within the next six months, some even by Christmas. Essentially, what the New South Wales government has done is that they've suspended normal planning permissions to enable two projects that will pipe water quickly to drought-stricken towns and they've waived usual environmental rules to allow another pipeline to pump water to a town, not at any time, sorry, at any time, not just when the river is high, which means they're finally putting people before environmental water flows. And, of course, that's how it should be. Thank God at least one government in this country is putting common sense before green ideology and has put people first, because elsewhere, too many state governments and local councils are into environmental virtue signalling at the expense of our rural and regional communities. The point, surely, is that something that's necessary for human wellbeing should not be denied in order to satisfy planning rules that have become overly fastidious or to prefer the environment in general over human life. Now, as you know, I've been critical of the federal government for making money available but not ensuring that new water infrastructure, dams in particular, actually get built. Well, credit here to the Feds for making these New South Wales moves more possible. But credit especially to the Berejiklian government and to Deputy Premier John Barillaro and Water Minister Melinda Pavey for making specific decisions and then getting on with them. Too often these days, governments that want to be seen to be doing something announce a big pot of money and then sit back waiting for some other entity or organisation to come up with a proposal. Or worse, hope the public service will drive the outcome. Now, fair enough, it's, if it's an area where other players are used to taking action, like rolling out new sports facilities, because local sporting clubs will put then in an application and things generally will start to happen. But where the issue relates to something that's been neglected for generations or, as well, is an area of government policy that's well and truly demonised by the Green Lobby, such as water infrastructure, government actually has to drive outcomes, not just fund them. This is precisely what the New South Wales government has had the courage to do in this instance. Now, you heard Minister Pavey on my show on Monday night. She's not for turning here. She expects her bureaucrats to implement her decisions for more dams and more tangible water projects, or they can walk. I know, I can hear you all on this. Wouldn't it be great if there were 10 other pavies in water portfolios right around the country? But now that the New South Wales government appears to have actually got into the habit of acting like a real government, I reckon there's some other things it could get on with as well. In addition to water, Barillaro has been talking about the need for more coal-fired power stations and, down the track, even nuclear power to keep the lights on and the prices down. So let's get cracking. Let's end the New South Wales state prohibition on nuclear power. Let's repeal the ban and have a fair-income community debate on our power supply for the next 100 years. And given that electricity always used to be a state government responsibility anyway, let's announce a new coal-fired power station too while they're at it. Just imagine the politics here. If the people of New South Wales end up with power that doesn't black out, like Victoria and South Australia, and their power is far cheaper because it's built on coal and gas supply as well as nuclear, as I've just said, it will be the best example yet of why so much of this electricity mess is a crisis of our own making. And, of course, when the southern states then need to rely on New South Wales to keep their lights on, when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine, or when blackouts hit again this summer as before, Australians will finally see this energy farce for what it is. Socialism masquerading as environmentalism. 
You see, that's the whole reason they're all getting so hysterical. The Extinction Rebellion mob and others. They're getting hysterical because finally, ordinary people are starting to understand how we ended up in this mess, which means for the green zealots, the game's almost up. Now's the time for the sensible centre-right to keep up the pressure, keep their foot on the left's throat here and not back away. All credit to the New South Wales government and let's hope other state governments learn from their example.